Hey class, my name is Kristen May and I'm going to briefly walk you through the definition and description of conversation analysis. The concept was developed by Harvey Sachs and Emanuel Shegeloff and is defined as an investigation of social interaction between humans, most especially of everyday ordinary conversation, referred to in conversation analysis as talk and interaction. The main objective of conversation analysis is to explain how people communicate or speak with one another. In conversation analysis, there are three key assumptions to conversational organization. One, talk is action. Language conveys a message. Two, action is structurally organized. Single acts are organized into sequences. And number three, talk creates and sustains intersubjective reality. Conversation creates meaning. Hi, my name is Heather Jones, and today I'm going to be discussing sampling, data, and transcription in conversation analysis. And I got all this information from our textbook, Straight Talk About Communication Research Methods, by Christine Davis and Kenneth Lacklin. So to start, I'm going to discuss sampling in conversation analysis. And sample sizes for conversation analysis can vary depending on the research that's being conducted. Sometimes a single conversational event might be sufficient, but other times more discourses might be required to compare across people or settings. Some people refer to sampling and conversation analysis as collecting specimen, and you would want one or more specimens that are representative of the category that you're studying. Conversation analysis is likely to use purposive sampling, but sometimes, depending upon the research question or study objective, might use maximum variation or typical instance sampling. So now that we've discussed sampling in conversation analysis, we are now going to discuss data collection in conversation analysis. So conversation analysis typically utilizes natural conversation and recordings of these conversations. Conversation analysis doesn't use interviews too often because it considers interviews to be too subject to the, in, to the researcher's manipulation or construction. This means that conversation analysis uses qualitative data while also trying to be as objective as possible. So lastly, we are going to discuss transcription in conversation analysis. And transcription is essential to document things said in conversation analysis. It's especially important to transcribe both what is said and how it is said. A transcription in conversation and analysis is a way to capture the actual data, which is the conversation. Those that research conversation and analysis consider characteristics of talk, such as pacing, turn taking, delivery, words, sounds, silences or spaces, overlapped speech and sounds, volume, and other verbal and nonverbal details. Therefore, it is apparent that reading and writing conversation analysis transcripts is both an art and a skill. And here are some of the signs that are used in transcripts to symbolize meaning for conversation analysis researchers. So brackets, mean conversational turns that overlap with each other. Numbers in parentheses represent pauses. Underscoring represents a stress and pitch. A period means a fall in tone. Arrows mean a raising and lowering of pitch. Colons mean a prolonging of sound. An equal sign represents no gap between lines. A degree sign represents quiet speaking and sound. In a question mark, means a rise in tone. This proves that reading and writing transcripts and conversation analysis is like learning another language. What's going on guys? I'm Jared and today I'm going to discuss coding and writing and conversation analysis. Coding and analysis and conversation analysis identifies devices used by conversational participants and discusses and describes those devices. Coding identifies speech characteristics, such as the type of statements you make, which could be assertions, declarations, directives, commissives, expressives, turn-taking, gaps, pauses between speakers, and structural and verbal and nonverbal patterns. This method consists of detailed conversation transcriptions and a sense-making process within speaking. You have a sense to interpret the certain types of speech characteristics. 
Conversation analysis uses an inductive process where you work back and forth between the transcript and the analysis you are conducting, which involves three important steps. One, identify sequences of related talk. Two, examine how the speakers take on certain roles or identities. And three, look for outcomes of the talk and work backwards to find out how the outcome was produced. Next, writing and conversation analysis typically does not include much in the way of theoretical or literature discussions and tends instead to provide detailed discussion of the transcripts and the meaning resulting from the communication patterns. How is a conversation organized and how do people arrange it? What is the role of each participant in the conversation along with the subject matter? These things must be known in order to get an accurate analysis of the transcriptions. A typical conversation analysis report usually involves the use of extensive transcripts as data evidence. And with that, you can interpret that there is more to a conversation than what's being said. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tatum Wells, and I will be talking about how conversation analysis is conducted, the characteristics, and steps. How it is conducted. Conversation analysis is thought of as a collection of specimen. You would want one or more specimens that is representative of the category you are studying. The characteristics. Being able to identify different speech characteristics such as type of statements, turn and talking, taking gaps, pauses between speakers, and structural, verbal, and nonverbal patterns found in the book, page 382. The steps, identifying sequences of related talk, examining how the speaker takes take of certain roles and identities, look for outcomes of the talk, and work backwards to trace the way outcome was produced. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tatum Wells, and I will be talking about how conversation analysis is conducted, the characteristics, and steps. Conversation analysis is thought of as collecting a specimen, and you would want one or more specimens as that is representative of the category you are studying. The characteristics. Being able to identify different speech characteristics, such as types of statements, turn-taking, gaps and pauses between speakers, and structural and verbal and nonverbal patterns. The steps, identifying sequence of related talk, examine how the, speaker take, how the speakers take of certain roles or, or identities, look for outcomes of the talk, and work backwards to trace the way that the outcome was produced. Thank you. Hi, my name is Blair Ferris, and today I'll be talking about some of the research methods. Conversation analysis often overlaps with ethnography. Ethnography depends on interviews and participant observation, and this would seem compatible with conversation analysis, which uses audio and video to capture interactions. Conversation analysis involves a more detailed and intense kind of observation, which adds on to the ethno ethnographic strategies. To refresh your minds about qualitative research, it is based on inference, impressions, and uses a more inductive form of reasoning. Qualitative research is used when something needs to be explored in a more in-depth way within its environment or context. Conversation analysis fits best within a qualitative research method because researchers are analyzing conversations, looking for characteristics and patterns similar to how qualitative reasoners, researchers study patterns, symbols, and norms in, in a culture to understand how people create meaning. Hi, I'm Isabel Rosser, and for our video today, we have TED Talk led by Professor Elizabeth Stocko, who is a conversation analyst and British scientist who explains what she termed the conversational racetrack, the daily race to understand each other when we speak. And she explains how to avoid hurdles that trip us up and cause conflict. Stocko developed the conversation analytic role play method, CARM for short, an approach based on evidence about what sets of problems and roadblocks can occur in conversation, as well as the techniques and strategies that best resolve these problems. And the reason I know this is because at line three, something doesn't happen. What doesn't happen at line three is a return greeting. Instead, there are seven tenths of a second of silence, and that's enough to know trouble ahead. So let's see what is going to unfold. Here's line four. Here's Dana. Okay, so she's returning the greeting, but we can see it's delayed. 
And what she's not going to do next is move into the, the sort of how are you's. Um, instead, she's going to become a first mover. Here comes Dana's inserted question. Where have you been all morning? <laughs> We can all recognize that as not an innocent information-seeking question, um, <laughs> but a question that's got some bite in it. So where have you been all morning? I've been trying to get you all morning. I'm your girlfriend. I ought to know where you've been all morning. Now, what can you do when confronted with a first mover? You could say, Gordon could say next, what, what do you mean you don't own me? Where, what do you mean where have I been all morning? You could start that, and then you're into some kind of conflict. Um, so instead, another way to handle a first move is to do this. Oh. <laughs> I'm delighted to hear from you. <laughs> Gordon is going to just do what Nancy did. Hi. I'm just going to do what comes next in the interaction. Then he's going to add a little detail. Um. Now, <laughs> ums like this tend to crop up. It places an interaction to mark the prior as inapposite or unexpected in some kind of way. So here, Gordon is, first of all, pushing back on the first move with the, hello, I'm just doing what normally happens here. And then, mm, I wasn't really expecting you to ask this question next, um, before he answers the question. And here comes the answer to the question. I've been at a music workshop. Okay. And now he's going to try and move the conversation along into initial inquiries. How are you? Now... If Dana was now happy and satisfied that she now knows where Gordon was all morning and was going to just go, fine, how are you, and bounce back into the kind of normal structure that we might see, we would see that at eight. But instead, we see some silence, this time half a second. So we know there's still trouble in the call. Um, and here comes Dana with the reply, which probably isn't going to be, fine, how are you? Instead, she's going to say, I'm okay which is quite hearably not fine, and she's not doing the, re the reciprocal, how are you, back to him either. So now Gordon really it is very hearable that Dana is not fine, there is trouble ahead and problems, and she wants to have that conversation, and he could ask her at 10, but instead he says, <laughs> So Gordon is really pushing back here um, on Dana's project. Dana's got a project here, which is to have a conversation with Gordon about some trouble, and Gordon's got a project, which is to not go there um, with Dana. Okay, so I want you to try and think of our encounters that we have as being like a racetrack, with a landscape and a distinct kind of architecture. So we start at the beginning of the race with our recipient or recipient, and along the way we proceed along the racetrack, completing projects of various kinds, as we've just seen Hilo and Nancy and Dana and Gordon do. Um, so if you just think about your everyday encounters, there are lots of different types of racetracks. So there might be the telephone calls that you have with the service, they might be doctor-patient conversations, they might be first dates, they might be the conversation you have in the checkout at the supermarket. But all of those things will have a distinct landscape to them um, and projects along the way, so greetings and questions and answers and requests and offers and flirts and assessments and stories and partings. And what we've seen so far is that Hilo and Nancy are kind of moving smoothly, progressing around their racetrack, whereas Dana and Gordon are kind of on the rumble strip at the side of the racetrack, kind of bumping along like this, and they may or may not get smoothly progressing around their racetrack um, ever again. Um, the... Okay, so conversation analysis then, what do we do? What we do is record hundreds of examples of the same type of encounter. Um, and then what we do is take those recordings um, and transcribe them in a lot of forensic and linguistic phonetic kind of detail, and then look at the entire landscape of the encounter to establish the component activities that comprise it. Now, if we can see from Dana and Gordon's call that before Dana's even spoken, um, after that seven-tenths of a second of silence, that there is going to be a problem in that encounter, then we can start to see that there might be a really big payoff to looking at uh, professional encounters, workplace encounters, to try and identify what is working and not working in those encounters. So I've done lots of work on things like police interrogations of suspects, um, commercial sales. Conversation analysis is an investigation of social interaction between humans, mostly of everyday and ordinary conversation, according to page 380 of the textbook. The study that we focused on that encompasses everything we've covered so far about our conversation analysis is called 
a conversation analysis view of communication as jointly accomplished social interaction, an unsuccessful proposal for a social visit by Navelle and Rendell Shore in 2009. The study focuses on the effectiveness of conversation analysis via phone conversation. Um, the two subjects were two middle-aged men and the study recorded their phone conversation. So in the study, one man would propose or call the other man and propose going to a social event and the other man would either accept or deny the invitation based on the man's ability to communicate effectively through the phone conversation. So the study highlights the theory of a sender and receiver. The sender is the first man who proposed the social event. The receiver is the other man who can either accept or deny the proposed message according to the success of his communication ability through the phone. Um, the message transfer model of communication is favored by the study it kind of encompasses sender and receiver. Um, the study found that thinking of communication as conveying information can miss the rich details of how people experience social life. Navelle and Rendell Short, 2009. So what this means is the study found that um, the proposed event of going to a social event was turned down because the communication was not the same as it would be in person. So the man could not pick up on cues and physical references of what the man was saying through the phone. So this made the tone of the phone conversation sound like the first man did not want the other guy to attend the social event with him. So if you talk through the phone where someone cannot see you, they cannot successfully analyze what you are trying to communicate. Um, the study also found that conversation analysis is conceptualization of communication can make visible the taken for granted substances for using the language of means for social action. Neville and Rendell Short, 2009. When discussing content analysis, one of the very most important concepts to be considered is intercoder reliability. The process of intercoder reliability begins with two different coders will begin to code the same data. Once they have separately coded the data, they will then compare the percentage of agreement between the two coders. The end goal of intercoder reliability is to produce the most accurate percentage of agreement. While 90% to 100% of agreement would be ideal, 70% to 80% of agreement in intercoder reliability is said to be adequate. Howdy, my name is Sky Clements, and I'm going to be going over the summary of conversation analysis today and the things and the information that we reviewed with you today during our PowerPoints. So in summary, conversation analysis is an investigation of the study of social interaction and talk in interaction that is rooted in the sociological study of everyday life. Conversation analysis was developed by Harvey Sachs and Emanuel Schloff, and the overall goal of conversation analysis is to study how exactly people communicate and or speak with one another. During this presentation, we discuss the definition of conversation analysis, sampling methods, data collection and transcription, characteristics and the steps that are used, research methods, coding and writing, and a case study that's focused on conversation analysis and a real-life example for you to relate to. To review and conclude, conversation analysis does not use observation or interviews as a source of data for the simple reason of conversation analysis considers interviews to be too subject to the researcher's manipulation or construction, and conversation analysis seeks to analyze more pure forms of natural conversation. When utilizing data collection for conversation analysis, qualitative data is most often used so that the data can remain as objective as possible. And transcription is a very essential part of conversation analysis as well because transcription is the conversation and the actual data that is used. It's crucial to record it properly and Heather shared some signs that are used in transcripts to symbolize meaning for conversation analysis researchers, which are important to refer to when addressing transcription. We went over characteristics of conversation analysis and the steps that are involved, characteristics including turn-taking, gaps and pauses, and many others followed by some of the steps that are involved, including identifying sequences of related talk, examining roles during conversations, and looking for the outcome in conversation. We then moved on to talk about the research methods of conversation analysis, and those were shared in the PowerPoint slides as well in an in-depth ex explanation. And then there was a summary of coding and writing, which relates back to the characteristics and steps as well.
To finish our presentation, we shared a case study called a conversation analysis view of communication as jointly accomplished social interaction and unsuccessful proposal for a social visit. This case study was a really great way for us to put all the information that we have learned over the time span of research and conversation analysis and give us an active perspective on it. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed learning and listening to what we had to say and share about conversation analysis and thank you guys for being here.